Back to the channel everyone, I'm George. I'm Stav, and today we're gonna to be assembling this R30 motor in George's terrible VRS3. Terrible, terrible. Welcome back to the channel everyone. We're gonna be, yes, like Stav said, assembling this R30 VR6 engine block, just the bottom end. We're gonna be doing crankshaft rods, pistons. We're gonna be filing our ring gaps, talking about uh, what gaps we're gonna be running. Uh, this is not gonna be a how-to video. Again, we're not professionals. We just play them on YouTube, mm -hmm. but we are gonna defer you to some really cool channels out there that already have some really great guides as far as uh, piston ring gap filing and some tips and tricks such as Jay over at Real Street Performance. I'll put his link in the comment section below. Please check put, it out. Please put the link this time. I'm gonna put the link. The link's gonna be in the description so you can check them out because me and Stav, uh, we don't want to make instructional videos, to be honest with you. We're still learning. There could be mistakes that we're making in this video. So we'd rather defer you guys to the professionals, the people that are out there making 2,000 plus horsepower, going fast, and so on and so forth. And Jay from Real Street is probably the best link that we could find online to resource it and, and kind of reference it. With that being said, though, uh, let's dive right into it. We're going to talk about which pistons, which rod combo we're going to be using. We're going to talk about which bearings. We're going to be talking about our piston ring gaps. And let's kick it off right now. What are you doing here, man? So I just dropped in. I'm, I'm up to cylinder three now, and I'm on ring number two, the, the lower ring or the middle ring, and I'm squaring the ring in the piston, uh, in the piston, in the cylinder. And then I'm currently actively using this little million dollar, thirty dollar uh, mm -hmm. Amazon filer, uh -huh. and I'm manually filing each ring packet. So I did cylinder one, two already. I'm on the third one on the second ring. I'll verify the lower uh, ring gaps, which we'll go over on the table here as soon as we get started, but. Uh, it's a bit of a tedious process. Again, as we mentioned in the beginning of the video, uh, this is not how how to. I don't think we qualify or we should be doing how to's. I don't think we should be doing that stuff, but we are going to be posting Jay from Real Street's uh, video. He's got a really cool guide, kind of giving you guys a head start on what to look for, how to how to measure, how to really take a look at uh, gaps on pistons and so on and so forth for your uh, race motor or your, your project. But that's what I'm doing. I'll have to cylinder three, then I have three more to go. And then as soon as I have the rings filed, smoothened, and everything, and ready, we'll install them on the pistons, which I'm individually labeling. So I'm up to cylinder three now. Mm -hmm. uh, I already did one and two. And then I'll install them on the pistons. And then we'll assemble the rod to the piston. Uh, we'll flip the motor over, clean everything. There's all the debris and all the particulates from filing probably get into the cylinder. So we'll wipe everything clean, spray it down. Um, and then we'll install the crank. Install the main bearings, of course, torque it, and then you guys will get to see the actual torque plate, not the torque plate, the, the, uh, girdle. the girdle that we have on there, the steel girdle. And of course, Yes, and then we'll be shaft. doing this towards the end of the video. So this is gonna be the intermediate shaft bearing kit that no one ever talks about, but it's very vital when doing an engine build. And we'll be talking where this goes and why it's so important later on in this video. But yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. I don't know, Stav, do you want to cover on the chart what we're going to be doing? Absolutely. And uh, Malacca ring gaps over here. Very uh, beautiful handwriting. That's mine. I'm just going to throw that out there. Six is greater than five. Just want to throw that out there also. And we're going to go with these specs here. Um, so we ba we're basically using the Wiseco JE. They, they're they very standardized uh, ring gaps and for our application of high boost, possibly nitrous. And, you know... Uh, we go by our bore size, which is 84 and a half millimeters, which you convert it to 3.327. And they tell you standard, to go, yeah. Yeah, stand, you know, to standardize, to, bring, to convert it to inch. Uh, then you times it by 70 thousandths, and here you get 23 thousandths. So the top ring will be 23 thousandths. The second ring will be, tw uh, comes out to 25 thousandths. We're just going to round up slightly here by uh, 0 0.001, get 25 thousandths. And the, and the third ring, which is the uh, oiling ring, you're going to have a minimum gap of 15 thousandths. Uh, again, Full disclosure, we are not professionals, but we do play one on YouTube. So yeah, I mean, this is what the, this is what the same spec I believe we did one with my motor, and of course, you know, George wants to be like me, no big deal. Uh, you know, 12 valves are the best, and uh, you know, great. Yeah, that's what we're doing. So I'm in between uh, always removing burrs off the rings too, uh, as I noticed while we're filing, and I'm going nice and slow on this thing, and you already see we already developed a little bit of a groove in there removing material but mm -hmm. um, just filing smooth to make sure there's no burrs in there as I'm fitting this inside the cylinder I don't scratch anything that could develop you know oil and consumption issues or some problems especially when we're trying to throw boost at it but um, the specs if you take a look at any of these names that Stav mentioned we did go about a thou or two above them uh, Jay from Real Street kind of recommends always going a little bit on the larger end you don't want that ring end to butt on the inside of the cylinder because when it does and it has nowhere to go 
uh, these kind of get little, uh, what do they call it? They warp mm -hmm. and you end up losing compression in that cylinder and you end up blowing a, a cylinder out. So we're going to try to, we're going to try to spec this and file this to at least the, to be conservative, but we want to be careful to make sure at least we're covered because we are going to be running nitrous in this car. Uh, we are going to be getting very aggressive. As you guys remember in the, in the unveiling video, uh, we are going, we have now a stainless steel O-ring. We're going to be using a copper head gasket. Well, we still haven't gotten yet, but it's in works. Hopefully in the next week or two, we'll have that copper head gasket. But we are going very aggressive with cylinder pressure in this motor. So we have gone aggressive with the prep stainless steel O-ring, half inch head studs, which will look really beefy once we install them. And uh, again, well, this is our first race motor that we're building for, and the goal is obviously a very high well, it's number. it's not the first, technically we built Stobbs, 12 valve, and, and you know, even my 2.8 on the S4, they can handle 850, 900 wheel. But you know, in today's world, you know, you got RS3s making well over a thousand horsepower with these automatic transmissions. The automatic transmission is the star of the show, but you need power to get there too. So we need to be able to make something higher in the spectrum of power. And we're going to be pushing a lot of cylinder pressure. A lot of the RS3 guys, especially guys that are running uh, and people in the TTRS world that are running nitrous are lifting heads left and right. Mm -hmm. And these guys are upgrading their head studs. They're not drilling anything out like we are, like with half inch head stud, but for high cylinder pressure and, and big boost, you're going to need something super aggressive. You're going to need something that's able to hold this stuff. So, this is going to be our first, to, to, to caveat to Stav's comment, it's going to be our first drag build, so yeah. to speak, for the high cylinder pressure stuff and the, 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 the high tolerance stuff. Yeah, and a lot of like, even when we go back to the spec, we're saying like 22 uh, thousands here, we went to 23 thousands. We gave ourselves a little bit extra play here for the extra uh, amount of cylinder pressure that we're going to run. And, uh, you know, by, especially by Jay's recommendation and a, and a few other people that we've spoken to, we went a little bit on the larger side. We're hoping this pays off because, again, we're going to throw a lot of cylinder pressure at this motor. Yeah, so uh, right now I'm just, again, squaring up the rings inside the cylinder, you know, um, trying to get them as flat as possible so this way I can get an accurate measurement. So I go about maybe a quarter way through on this, and I just kind of move it left and right to make sure it's nice and level. And I'm just checking my gap, that's all. Again, this is going to be the second ring, so the, the middle ring, pretty much what Stop pointed out. It's basically for 20, uh, 24 thousandths. It's on the higher end of that, so I, I bumped it up to 25. So I'm just looking for 25 for a nice slip fit. And for, and for example, when you put the, the top ring in, but before you start cutting, usually you see a, what, 15 or 16 thousandths? I have, so, so the bottom ring, I saw it goes up to 18 thousandths without me filing. And the top ring, the polished ring, uh, goes, I've seen about 15. So the top ring is actually the hardest ring that we've discovered. Um, and it's the hardest one. It takes the longest to file. And you remove about 8,000 according to it. Yes, and then, what you, and then I'm measuring every time I go around for about 10, five or 10 seconds, I'm measuring. Uh, the middle ring is softer, so I gotta be really careful. Mm -hmm. So I almost let one get away from me, but I was lucky right on that edge of that tolerance where I made it on cylinder two, but we're good to go. So you gotta be careful. There is softer material on that second ring. Yeah, so the top ring is definitely a harder material, so it takes longer. The second one, don't go at the same rate because you can, uh, you know, again, that's also the reason why we buy extra. We haven't needed them yet, but you know, just giving you guys little tips if this is your first time. Yeah, and right now I'm going for 25 thousand on the second ring, so it barely, barely wants to get in. So I'll take it out. I'll do maybe three or four rotations on this. It doesn't take much to remove material on it. I go in, just hold it nice and soft. I'm not butting it against. Again, uh, just showing you guys what works for me. You don't need a $300 ring filer, even though the $300 ring filers are really nice. A little manual one for about 20 or 30 bucks. But I also think for us, for somebody that doesn't do a lot of, you know, we're not doing 20, 30 motors like a machine shop a week, yeah. you know, maybe an electronic one might go too fast and cut the rings down faster than we want. So having a slow one, like, you know, like we're doing it, it's, it's good for the Yeah, one correct. Motor. And then on top of that, I'm only filing on that one side. I'm not doing on both. So mm -hmm. trying to keep the measurements consistent. And then I'm using a jeweler's file kit. Uh, that we ended up picking up from Amazon too for about maybe 15 bucks, 10, 15 bucks. We gotta get that Amazon sponsorship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, I've just been kind of deburring the rings as I'm filing them through. Again, making sure they're not scratching the inside of that. Going very light, just removing the burrs and smoothing them over, and that's it. We're on cylinder three. Uh, we'll go with four, five, and six, and then the next time we come on this video for an update, we'll have them assembled and then ready to drop in uh, the pistons and the rods, and then we're gonna be installing and torquing the bottom end along with showcasing the that actual girdle. girdle. So let's let's do that stuff. I'll get back on the time lapse and then okay. we'll we'll do the rest of the race. Come, come on, employee, you gotta work harder. <laughs> uh, George, what we got here, man? So we took off the girdle. We're gonna clean the mating surfaces on both the block and the girdle. It's a steel plate. God, we 
you know, snagged it from Turbo Impressions. Same stuff that HST was running when they were still using the cast iron uh, VR6. Uh, we removed pretty much the main caps, uh, reinstalled the studs, put a little of the ARP uh, anti-seize, the faster assembly, kind of awesome. ultra torque. Yeah, yeah, with name, uh, we, bought, we bought a bigger one because sometimes they supply like a little small one, but you can never have too much of this stuff. So the next step is I'm going to use a lint-free, clean all the mating surfaces of mm -hmm. the bearings, make sure there's no debris or anything like that. I'll clean everything. I already put the oil squirters in to the mm -hmm. mains. Mm -hmm. So those are in. You remember, I don't know if you remember when we put the 2.8 together, we forgot that. The yeah, long correct. time ago, my 2.8. Mm -hmm. So we have that in there now. Um, bearings. Yeah, we're going to install the calico-coated main bearings, which are right here. These are going to be the main bearings, upper and lowers. Uh, we're going to put lots of loop up, down, behind, in the back. Yeah, a lot of people were questioning us before, but, I mean, they said my motor wouldn't spin, would lock up a bearing in 27,000 so miles. I, so, with building engines, as far as what I've learned, uh, it's always been protocol to not put any kind of lubrication behind the bearing, because they, they claim it could help spin the bearing. Now... Because it changes the tolerance. Could that too. Uh, but here's the thing. A thousand different ways to do this stuff. Everyone has their own experiences. Again, I think, again, I'll mention his name. Jay from, from Real Street Performance ended up posting a video why he puts lubricant behind in his bearings. Uh, and this dude builds 1,500 plus horsepower super engines. Six second, engines. two JZs. Yeah, yeah. And, and mind you, we're not putting ourselves in the same league as that. No way. But, um, you know, for this engine, I am going to apply a very small dab just a little bit to help it seat in. Just Correct. the same way he does. Uh, the same thing we did on your engine, on my old engine, on the 2.8, on the uh, VRS that's right there. Uh, and then we're going to install the bearings on both the caps and the bottom end. And then we're going to install the crank. We're going to torque it down and install it. And then install the um, girdle. girdle. And then we're going to drop in and assemble the pistons and finish up the short block. So, Stav, let's get right to it. Let's, uh, let's drop in the crank, get the... Get the girl installed, and then we'll turn our attention to building up these pistons so we can wrap up this video. Absolutely, let's do it. All right, the mains are torqued, installed. Girdle from Turbo Impressions, the steel girdle is installed with, uh, let's see, a little bit of seal on the inside. So this way, you know, this goes between obviously the oil pan and the actual bottom of the uh, block. But it's looking good, guys, and it spins freely. Spins really nice, and I can spin it by hand. Nice and smooth. Um, so now we're gonna move on to assembling both the pistons and rods and get this short block completely assembled. Stop, you ready? Born ready for this. All right, let's do this, let's do this. And it's uh, we're using a 12 valve crank, huh? Oh, I forgot about that, it's, thank you for reminding me. <laughs> See how nice it's, it rotates, if it was like a 24 valve, it'd be like <laughs> 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 All right, so I'm gonna clean off the table here, get rid of half this stuff, and then I'll start assembling the rings on the pistons and then we'll install the actual pistons on the rods and get the short block installed. George, what are we doing here, man? Come on. Pistons and rods are fully assembled um, and ready to go. All the ring clearances are, you know, as you guys saw, filed and set. All the orientations on the pistons are per the requirement for the manufacturer. What does it say there? Uh, it says get fucked. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah, it's a subtle... It's laser etched. Oh, it kind of looks like a Sharpie. Hmm, interesting how that works. And it's cylinder six, so it's no pun intended. Yeah, But exactly. we got everything ready, and we pretty much have the short block now to uh, drop in the pistons and rods, and then the short block will be about 85% assembled, and then we'll be done with this video. So I wanna, I know we talked about installing the intermediate shaft bushing and whatnot, but I think for this video, we're going to wrap it up, do the piston and rod install, and then we'll save that when we're actually doing the rest of the bearings and the, uh, the rest of the, the... Timing components? Yeah, correct. I think it'll be a lot better suited instead of putting it in this. So this will be just a short block assembly video. So let's get it in. I'm kind of excited to see what the pistons are going to look like. Uh, I may want to do a little bit more Sharpie magic uh, in the block on top once mm -hmm. it's installed, but let's do that. We'll start with cylinder one and start dropping it in. Absolutely. Let's get, let's get to it. Come on. What do we got here, man? What do we got? It's complete. Rods and pistons are installed, torqued. These things are massive. I'll put a screenshot of how big these rod bolts are, three eighths, mm -hmm. compared to what? What we had before? Five sixteenths. Five sixteenths and tooled steel. George's tooled, favorite. son. Tooled steel. So we got tooled steel uh, rod bolts, and these things are massive, and it's kind of cool, and you'll see it in the picture that I'm about to screenshot. Uh, there's these little dowel pins inside the actual uh, 
the rod itself on the end cap that kind of keep it in place. So they're meant for heavy duty, big abuse. Uh, but everything is installed. Uh, the crank rotates freely. It feels good. It looks good. Um, we didn't run into one problem, uh, surprisingly. Um, you know, and every time we, we run into problems, you know, little things that we have to backtrack or take a couple steps back. But, but let's, let's not curse ourselves because maybe in the next video we're taking this all apart. Yeah, no, it's, we, we messed to, up the, the blah, 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 blah. We, we forgot to put the bearings in. <laughs> oh, my God. This thing's heavy. Woo. So I'm going to show you guys the motor. Mm-hmm. Just gonna watch George. Right. This thing's heavy. I, I, I appreciate help. you holding the camera and not helping. I appreciate it. Yeah. In my oh my god. Oh man, so you got cylinder six, five, four, three, two. Yeah, it's clean. But yeah. as you guys remember in the beginning, uh, again, this is gonna be our first stainless steel O-ring motor mm -hmm. that we're experimenting with and going drag racing with. It's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. Um, We've been beating the piss out of that thing with like, what, 10, 15 PSI on yeah. a stock block that's like leaking oil out of a rear main seal. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to have a fully built R30, de-stroked. I mean, you got tool steel, heavy duty wrist pins, tool steel, uh, rod bolts, you know. Yeah. You got half inch head studs. Half inch head studs, yeah. We got the steel girdle that's in from Turbo, uh, Turbo Impressions from Marcus over there overseas. Thank you, Marcus. I think this is going to be... This is gonna be a serious motor, guys, and I'm really excited. We got the cylinder head over there. I'm waiting on new lifters to come in. I ordered all brand new OEM lifters. We're gonna keep the head hydro for now, but I will experiment with solid lift in the future to kind of see where it does for us. Mm -hmm. But we are still, again, as I told you guys in the beginning of the video, we are waiting on copper head gaskets. So right now we are at a standstill for two things, lifters and copper head gasket. So as soon as this copper head gasket comes in, we can mate the motor and put it all together. I think the timing kit should be in here in the next couple days. So this is exciting. This is, we finally got the built motor assembled. Well, the bottom R end. Our first R30. This is gonna be our first R30 and then our first drag racing motor. And George, and I wanna ask you, cause a lot of people are gonna ask, how does it feel to finally own a 12 valve crank? <laughs> I mean like, well you don't technically own it. So like, those watching, you can build an R30 with a 24 valve or a 12 valve crank is the same. But the problem is I don't have spare 24 valve motors. Stav has an abundance of them. So I stole a crank mm -hmm. from him. And then in fact, technically the 3.2 R32 engine that's inside the RS3 that we've been driving the last few months is Stav's. Stav went to a junkyard many years ago and got it for like 200 bucks, pulled mm -hmm. it himself from pick apart. Uh -huh. And it's been sitting in my garage and I've been charging him rent and storage for it. So since he owes me so much storage, what is it like 30 grand, 40 30, grand 30 storage? Grand, 30 grand. I stole it and I threw it my RS3. Yeah. But guys, listen, um, we got the short block assembled, all DP engine rods, pistons, um, again, turbo impressions, uh, cradle, not cradle, uh, engine uh, girdle. We have the uh, 3 8 rod bolts, everything, calico coated main and rod bearings, ARP, uh, main studs, half all torqued. Head, half, half inch head studs. And, and let's show them on the crank too. Now that the motor's, the crank's in, the extra dowel pin that we put in, we put in for the uh, fluid damper. damper. Yeah, right. so that's like an extra like uh, pin there just for security. I don't know why, so many people don't run it, but we threw it on there just because I think the trolls got to us and we wanted a little extra security. But either way, I, I'm, I'm awaiting the ARP crank bolt to come in for that. But that's it. And of course, full disclosure, if you plan on running one of these, Put a new bolt with Loctite. What? No, no, rerun no. the same old bolt from 20 years ago. No, yeah, yeah. and then run a flu uh, crank pulley that the rubber falls off of. Fluid damper is the way. Been running it on both of our cars. Oh, and just to give a shout out too, a lot of people are running the super dampener on some of their VR oh, cars. Oh yeah, the ATI. Yeah. So uh, just an aftermarket crank pulley that's 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 uh, that's viscous damped. Definitely a go-to versus the rubber-lined OEM pulley. Twenty-year-old pulley that falls apart. Yeah, correct. But guys, I think this looks beautiful. I think it looks phenomenal. Sav was making fun of me because I wanted to paint the uh, the engine silver, but I think it actually looks really for the par. But yeah, that's it. I think, Stav, we should just kind of close this off right here. Guys, listen, uh, I hope you liked this video. Again, um, we weren't going to post too many how-tos as we're still learning and we don't want anyone to follow really in our footsteps as far as making mistakes. But we did post some links in the comments and in the description for those of you guys that want to follow some race shops that are building some high horsepower stuff and got some piston filing guides and all this other stuff. Check that out as far as the ring gaps. But 
without without further ado guys we're gonna wrap up this video thank you guys so much for the support we appreciate all the comments all the feedback uh we posted today saying we we're assembling the short block early today it's sunday you're gonna see this video here in the next five or six hours i'm gonna go edit it and you'll have it for monday morning and then stops part two video for wiring should be out later this week as he showcases now where the cybex is going to be installed how clean it looks and some of the gremlins that he found in the car uh, while he was working on it. So we've got some really exciting and some interesting videos coming your way this week. And we hope you guys enjoy them. Uh, but that being said, uh, that's thank it. yeah, that's it. Thank you guys for watching. And any comments, concerns, or anything like that, put them Negative in the comments below. comments only down below, please. <laughs> put them in the comments below. And uh, I guess we'll see you guys in the next video. I'm George. I'm Stav. Love you guys. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys next time.